George Clooney, isn't it? Ocean Case. Uh, it's my honor today to start our session. Our session today is Ocean 11, which is the Venus session. Ocean 11, uh, we are eight speakers. We'll try to help Mr. Ocean to get better. We, ha we are eight speakers and three uh, chairpersons will help Mr. Ocean to get better. Uh, Mr. Ocean, 40 years old, 40 years uh, male patient complaining of dilated veins and multiple ulcer of the lower left leg. Duplex showed incompetent great softness vein, patent and competent deep venous system with incompetent mid thigh, dilated perforators and dilated left ankle perforators. Let us see the scenario, how those uh, eight giants will help Mr. Ocean to get better. So you, you want to introduce now Professor Caprini? We have him with them. Okay, so that is uh, another giant figure that needs no introduction, and that's uh, Professor Caprini, connected online from the United States, uh, who will uh, give us an insight about why anticoagulation policy is different uh, in every surgical patient. Greetings, everyone. It's a great honor and pleasure to be able to deliver this lecture to the Egyptian Vascular Club on the occasion of the 17th annual meeting. I'm extremely sorry. I would like nothing more to be there in person, but uh, right now my health does not uh, permit traveling to that extent. Nevertheless, uh, it's a delight to be with all of you and here are my disclosures. Let's talk about the Caprini score. The Caprini score is a thorough history and physical. It consists of 40 elements. And those uh, 40 elements we know uh, are factors which can cause a blood clot. As the number of risk factors goes up, so does the incidence of venous thrombosis. We also know that these factors have different power. Some are low power like birth control pills and others are high power like cancer of the esophagus and pancreas. So the power of the risk factors combined with the number of risk factors yields a, uh, a score. And that score increases in nonlinear uh, fashion according to the risk of venous thromboembolism. So as the venous thromboembolism goes up, the rate of venous thromboembolism goes up, so does the risk score. It's been validated in over 5 million patients and more than 310 publications to date. Now let's take a look at why this is such an important but yet simple concept. Patient age 42 years, BMI 29 on birth control pills. That patient has three risk factors. That patient's Caprini risk score is three. Second patient to take a look at is a 76 year old patient who has uh, a history of pulmonary embolism and past cancer. That patient has three risk factors but the Caprini score is eight. So although, though each of these patients has the same number of factors, the combination of number of factors and their power result in a more accurate estimate of VTE risk compared to a simple uh, list of risk factors alone. And be, be careful, a surgical procedure considered to be minor from the surgical standpoint may be major from the thrombosis standpoint. Let's take a look at what we have as a result of The result of an anesthetic. When an anesthetic is given either a general or regional, venous stasis occurs due to calf muscle paralysis. So as the muscles are paralyzed, 
there's, they, they fail to maintain the vascular tone of the veins, and the veins can continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger as more blood is pumped into the leg and not being pumped out of the leg. So finally, the, the veins can crack, causing over distension, uh, and in those cracks can begin the formation of blood clots. By the same token, that blood in those venous stasis segments is hypercoagulable. It's hypercoagulable because it, result, it contains the metabolites from the muscles. They're continuing to metabolize, so the waste products are there. And then the slow blood flow triggers blood coagulation, uh, as we're going to show you in a minute what happens to the white cells. And then finally, in addition to that, it would be the underlying pathology. Why is the reason a patient being operated on? Cancer, infection, trauma with multiple broken bones, and so forth. So all of these contribute to the hypercoagulability straight. Time of state, uh, time of anesthesia increases these effects, and we know that using pneumatic compression during surgery is a, is valuable to, and important to minimize these changes, but it doesn't make them go away. Now here is a venous uh, uh, capillary distended, and uh, as a part of a surgical experiment, to over a million. Uh, and being looked at with a million power uh, microscope. And this is the brilliant work of Tony Camerata and his associates. And you can see that the lining of the veins develops cracks. And in those cracks, blood clots can begin to form. And furthermore, when the blood slows down, as seen by the darkness, the white cells change into adhesion molecules. And they become attached to the vein wall. And as they do, it's like an airplane landing. And finally, these adhesion molecules, when they come to rest, extrude granules which start an inflammatory reaction. And that inflammatory reaction damages the capillary and allows it to be porous. And then other white cells come along as adhesion molecules and, and, and clump there uh, uh, behind the first one. And eventually, the capillary is rendered non-functional, and that begins the process of blood coagulation. Here we see in the actual experiment a, 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 a stasis model where the, the uh, venous stasis is produced by the white cell is invading the vascular capillary. And here's another experiment that if you take a leg and straighten it all the way, this shows you that the popliteal vein will become occluded as the vein is straightened out. So you want to be careful to put a pillow under the knees, and that's why this is done after most operations, because the straight leg can occlude the popliteal vein and cause blood to have to go around that area to get out of the leg, further uh, in, uh, causing stasis. So remember, minor operations may be major from the thrombosis standpoint. Those procedures requiring 45 minutes of general renal an regional anesthesia are considered major uh, from the thrombosis standpoint, due to those factors that I showed you in the previous slides. And the longer the procedure, the greater the risk. Pneumatic compression helps to modulate these changes, but doesn't make it go away. Pillow under the knees is very important to prevent the popliteal entrapment syndrome. And remember that the total VTE risk for a patient consists of the inherent risk of the surgical procedure plus the patient's baggage. What is that baggage? Cancer overweight, history of thrombosis, uh, uh, infection, a number of risk factors, and they can all add up and produce a patient that although is having a very minor operation, is very major from the thrombosis standpoint. Classic would be Achilles, uh, uh, Achilles tendon repair or a laparoscopic appendectomy in somebody with a history or family history of thrombosis who's overweight and overage. So it's a common mistake not to include both of these elements when calculating the patient's overall risk. Now, in 2012, the CHESS guidelines first uh, conceded, really, that risk assessment was an important tool. And one of those ways was with a Caprini score. And they put together the data available at the, at the time. And they came up with this conclusion, which I still don't understand, that patients with high risk uh, of five or more had a 6% chance of venous thrombosis. Well, now, not only do we know that's not, no longer valid in 2012, but the first two studies, there was only three studies at the time, and the first two studies are shown here. And in general surgery, 
the risk of thrombosis with a score of five or more, uh, five over was 1.3, and in uh, head and neck surgery is 0.9, but in plastic surgery it was also 1.3. But when the score was over nine, look at how it jumped to six and a half percent in general surgery, 11 percent in, pl in plastic surgery, 18 percent in head and neck surgery, and in the very large Vietnamese surgical study, four and a half percent. So the, the, the set point is critical in determining the highest risk of the patient and providing the proper anticoagulation with the balance against bleeding complications. And for example, when you take a look at a score of three to four in head and neck surgery, you'd never give that patient anticoagulants. All that'll do is increase the bleeding, God knows, in head and neck surgery. Whereas if the score is over nine, they must get it in order to prevent them from having a serious or fatal PE. Now, recently, Professor Orbanik uh, from Poland and Professor Kiri Lobostov, Kiri Lobostov from Moscow uh, did a very, very important analysis, a retrospective analysis of the thresholds of the Caprini score associated with an increased risk of venous thromboembolism across different specialties, a systematic review. And in this review, they correlated the Caprini score and VTE incidence in 68 studies enrolling 4,207,895 patients from different specialties gleaned from 4,562 screened references. And they concluded that the VTE risk for individual patients increases dramatically for certain populations at a threshold of 7 to 11. Now here are some of the details of their analysis. And this has been, has been accepted for publication very recently. And in mixed general and surgical patients, look at how that incidence increases, especially over nine. But then look at medical patients, over eight is 2.1%. Whereas in COVID-19, uh, seven to eight is 17% incidence of DVT and 28% of DVT if the score is over nine. This was a study, by the way, that was done early on before there were a lot of vaccinations. Cancer patients, look what happens. Look what happens. Patients who have a score of over 9, it goes up to 20%, 51% for over 11. Whereas from 0 to 4, it's 1.6%. Burns goes up to 8% over 9. Trauma in orthopedics is kind of variable, but it goes as high as 47% with a score of over 11. Urology and gynecology, lower incidence of venous thrombosis. Vascular surgery, intermediate, but still above uh, uh, Two to six is 1.6%. But yet when you get up to over 10, it's 14.7%. Head and neck surgery we already talked about, and the highest are up to 18%. General and, and mixed surgery, uh, again, 12 to 15, is up to 65% and 37 to 40% in those in thoracic surgery with a score of equal to or greater than nine. Mechanics, mechanical uh, plastic surgery uh, can be... Uh, Variable, but it can go very high uh, above nine, and in critically ill, uh, the same story uh, again above nine. So here is an overall picture of the results. In green, one to one percent or less, one percent to five percent in yellow, five to ten percent in orange, ten to twenty-five percent in red, and over twenty-five percent in purple or dark red. So you can see how it varies. And you, you can't just lump people together. They have to be done individually. And it, what's really important as well is that one should be very careful to look at their own population and see what their incidence is in their population, in their hospital, under those circumstances, because they can differ. And the threshold depends upon the specialty and, and all of these factors. So in conclusion, the Caprini score is a highly validated risk assessment model for VTE in many medical and surgical specialties. In most cases, the individual risk assessment increases dramatically with a threshold scores of 7 to 11. Further trials are needed to validate the Caprini score in other specialties, obstetrics, bariatric surgery, neurosurgery, transplant, etc., and establish individual thresholds. And you also need to do that in your own populations, in your own hospitals. Do an audit over 90 days of what the, what the scores are and what the prophylaxis is given 
and, and what the incidence of VTE is. And then based on that, you can make individual decisions about your thresholds. The total patient thrombotic risk is a combination of the type and length of surgery plus the individual patient risk factors, the baggage. Deep vein thrombosis history, family history of thrombosis, cancer history, age, weight, uh, all sorts of factors. A minor surgical procedure may be associated with a major thrombotic risk depending on the length of anesthesia. The risk assessment process is incomplete without documenting family history of thrombosis and past obstetrical complications. People forget about the fact that women during their childbearing age years, when they have uh, a history of unplanned abortions, of stillborns, of toxemia pregnancy, placental insufficiency, growth retardation of the infant, that may signal that they're carrying in their blood and a, a powerful antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. And that syndrome can either be beta-2 glycoprotein, lupus anticoagulant, or, or any cardiolipin antibodies. And those abnormalities may persist lifelong in certain patients, way past their obstetrical careers. And that's why you have to have that history so that if you have a 60-year-old patient, for example, you have to find out if that patient should be screened for the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. You don't just screen everybody, but if they have that positive history, you need to screen them and then calculate that in your overall thrombosis risk assessment. So I'd like to thank you all for your attention to this uh,